Okay, so let's start in proper integrals. Um, so once again, uh, let let f of x uh, be a function on a closed bounded interval from a to b. It's a finite interval. And we defined the integral from a to b of f of x dx to be the limit of the Riemann sum of f, right? Uh, as what's the, the limit? Uh, the limit as the as the number of partition points goes to infinity, or as the lengths of the subintervals go to zero. So as the lengths of the subintervals go to zero, uh, uh, if the Riemann sum converges to a number, that number is the integral from a to b of f. And uh, and at the beginning of this semester, I told you, I gave you, I wrote down a, a result which says, uh, if this limit exists, right, we say that f is integrable. If the limit of the Riemann sum does not exist, then f is not integrable. And if f is integrable, that is, if the integral exists from a to b of f, then f must be a bounded function. What's the meaning of a bounded function? It means that the value of f is always between two, two numbers over the interval from a to b. In other words, if you look at the graph of f over the interval from a to b, the graph is in between two horizontal lines. That's what it means to say that f is bounded. Okay. Um, so now we want to consider the integral of a function uh, over an infinite interval. Okay. Uh, and so for example, uh, we want to look at an integral like integral from 1 to infinity of 1 over x squared dx. Okay. So this is an integral of a function over an infinite interval. This is called, this is a, uh, this, is, this is an improper integral. And uh, the reason it's called improper because of, because the interval is infinity. Uh, the interval goes from the interval is an inf infinite interval, and um, we are going to refer to this uh, this integral as a type one improper integral. So this would be a type one type one uh, improper uh, integral. Okay. Um, so how do I define an an interval, uh, uh, the integral over an infinite interval like this? Well, let's suppose that I have a function f defined over an interval from a to infinity, and let's assume that the integral from a to t of f of x dx is defined for any t bigger than a. For any fixed t bigger than a, the integral from a to t of f is defined. That is, it, it is it, it is the integral over a finite <coughs> interval, and the definition is the limit of the Riemann sum. Suppose uh, any integral from a to t is uh, exists, and so what would be the definition of the integral from a to infinity? The integral from a to infinity of f would be. Well, you first take the uh, you first take the integral from a to t of f of x dx, and that integral. Remember, when you take the when you evaluate the integral from a to t, you go, you're going to get the antiderivative, and you're going to plug in t. You're going to plug in a, right? A is fixed. So your your the value of the integral from a to t would be a value in terms of t, and then you take the limit as t goes to infinity, right? As t goes to infinity. And that's the definition of the integral from a to infinity. Okay. And um, geometrically, what's the interpretation of this uh, integral? Well, let's say, let's say I have uh, the function f of x. Let's say is a positive function. It doesn't have to be, but uh, we can visualize it nice, uh, nicely. F is a non-negative function. Suppose the f is non-negative. The graph of f will be above. Uh, the x-axis, and uh, let's say the graph of f uh, looks like what I drew, 
from a to infinity. Um, then, if I look at the integral from a to t of f of x dx, integral from a to t f of x dx, that's going to give me what? That's gonna, going to give me the area below the graph of f above the interval from a to t, right? Now, as t goes to infinity, as t goes to infinity, this limit is going to compute what? As t goes to infinity, this limit, the limit as t goes to infinity is trying to compute the area below the graph of f from a to infinity, right? So that's what, that's what this improper integral is uh, computing. This, impi this improper integral is computing the area below the graph of that above the interval from a to infinity. Having said that, this limit may not, may not exist. So if this limit is defined, then we say that this integral is convergent. If this limit doesn't exist, then we say that this improper integral is uh, divergent. Okay. Now, if this limit, is, so in the, in my picture, when f is a non-negative function, when this limit is defined, it means that the area of this region is finite, right? When the limit doesn't exist, it would mean that this area doesn't have a this uh, region doesn't have a finite area, right? I'm going to do two examples that's going to explain to you what I mean by that. So first of all, um, let's look at this example. Um, so let's look at the integral from 1 to infinity of 1 over x squared dx. <coughs> um, uh, can you tell me what this, uh, so by definition, what is this? By definition, I take, uh, I'm going to take the integral from 1 to t, right? 1 over x squared dx, and then I'm going to take what? The limit as t goes to infinity. Now what's the integral from 1 to t? of 1 over x squared dx, well now we can apply fundamental theorem of calculus, right? So it's a uh, integral over a finite interval, so, and the function is continuous uh, over that interval. So here, of course, I'm assuming t is what? t is bigger than 1, right? t is bigger than 1. So here t is bigger than 1. Now, what is this? Uh, what is this integral then? Well, I have to find an antiderivative. Uh, can someone give me an antiderivative of this <coughs> function? Uh, let's uh, investigate here. I have the fu the integrand is one over x squared, right? One over x squared is the same as what? X to the negative two, right? So then, what's the antiderivative of x to the negative 2? Antiderivative is 1 over negative 2 plus 1, x to the negative 2 plus 1, right? Which is what? Negative x to the negative 1, right? Uh, and is that the same as negative 1 over x? Okay, so that's my, that's the antiderivative of the integrand. So by the fundamental theorem, I could write negative 1 over x here, right? And next, uh, I have to evaluate the antiderivative at, I have to evaluate the antiderivative at t. Uh, if I evaluate it at t, I get negative 1 over t, right? And then if I evaluate it at 1, I get negative 1 over 1. You guys agree with that? <coughs> plug in t, plug in 1, and subtract, right? Everybody's okay with that? Now, can someone tell me what's the limit as t goes to infinity of 1 over t? Zero. zero. So this guy, this guy is going to zero. So what am I left with? 
What am I left with? Plus one. Okay? Plus one. Is everybody okay? Any questions? I'm going to show you the geometric interpretation of that in a second. So we got one. Everybody agrees with that? Now, uh, because the limit is uh, because the limit is defined, we are going to call we are going to uh, call this integral. This improper integral will be called convergent. Convergent. Okay, when the limit is defined, it's called convergent. If this improper integral exists, it's called convergent. We'll see an example of divergent improper integral in a second. Everybody's okay? You can remember this term, convergent? <coughs> no, it, you find out if it's convergent or divergent. Yes, yes. So once you see that the limit is some number, it's convergent. If the limit is not a number, then it's divergent. So we're going to look at an example where uh, it's not going to exist. All right, so let's look at the second example. So what I have here is basically, what I have here is a w integral from 1 to infinity again, but now the integrand is 1 over root x, okay? 1 over root x. Okay, so uh, once again, what's the definition? I go, for, uh, I go from 1 up to t, 1 over root x, bx. Of course, here we are assuming t is larger or equal to 1. And then we are taking the limit as uh, t goes to uh, infinity. Now this time, I need to know the antiderivative of 1 over root x, right? So let's look at 1 over root x. 1 over root x. Is that the same as x to the negative half? You agree? Alright, so what's the antiderivative? 1 over negative half plus 1, x to the negative half plus 1, right? And what is that equal to? What is that, 2? Actually, half, right? Agree? 2 actually half, which is the same as 2 root x, right? Everybody's okay with that? The antiderivative of 1 over root x is 2 root x, right? Alright, so, you guys agree with that? Yes, okay. Um, and so now I could say this is equal to the limit as a t goes to infinity. Uh, oh, that was uh, 2 root x is the antiderivative at t at 1. This is equal to the limit as a t goes to infinity. And uh, we plug in t, and we plug in 1. If we plug in 1, we get what? Now, as t goes to infinity, what's happening to root t? Yeah, and minus 2 still goes to what? This limit is infinity. This limit is infinity, it's not a number, right? And so, uh, so what should I say? I should say that this integral that I started with, <coughs> that is a divergent, divergent integral, divergent improper integral. Make sense? Everybody's okay with that? <coughs> All right, so let's look at the geometric interpretation of these two integrals. Uh, both of the integrands in my two examples are non-negative, right? Both integrand. Uh, so uh, if you look at the graph of, 
So let's look at the graph of uh, 1 over x squared and the graph of 1 over root x. Which one is 1 over root x and which one is uh, 1, over, 1 over x squared? Blue one and the red one. Blue one is the graph of which one? 1 over x squared. And the red one is the graph of 1 over root x. Very good. So this is uh, the blue one. Is the graph of 1 over x squared. And, uh, and the red one is the graph of uh, 1 over root x. Why? When x is bigger than 1, when x is bigger than 1, x squared is bigger than root x, right? So you're dividing 1 by a bigger number, right? So 1 over x squared would be smaller. Am I making sense? When x is when x is bigger than one, when x is bigger than one, that means x squared is bigger than root x, right? And wouldn't that mean then one over x squared is less than one over root x, right? So I know that on the right side of one, one over x squared is below one over root x, but the opposite ha is happening on the left side of one, right? The opposite is happening on the left side of 1. Why? Because when x is less than 1, which one is bigger now? x squared or root x? When x is between 0 and 1, like 0 0.5, which one is bigger, x squared or root x? Root x. Okay. So on the left side of 1, the opposite is going to happen. In any case, we are, looking from, we are looking at from 1 to infinity. And if you look at that, uh, we, the integral from uh, fr uh, the integral from one to infinity of one over x squared is one. So what is that? Well, that's the that's the area of the blue region, right? The area of the blue infinite region. That's an infinite region. The area of that region is given by the integral from one to infinity of one over x squared, which is one. However. Um, the area below the graph of 1 over root x from 1 to infinity is infinity. It means that the area of that region is not finite. Okay? It's too big. In, uh, okay? It's too big. Am I making sense? Is everybody okay? So the area below 1 over root x is too big. Area below 1 over x squared is not so big. Okay? What's happening? Basically, you can see what is happening. 1 over x squared approaches 0 much faster than 1 over root x. Am I making sense? And that's why the one of them is, uh, has finite area, but the other one doesn't have the finite area. Okay? All right. Now, so that was the for, uh, that was uh, uh, one, so we, we looked at the integral from a fixed number a to infinity, right? We can also look at look at integral from negative infinity to a fixed number. So uh, now I'm looking at the integral from negative infinity to a fixed number b. How would you define that? Well, you're going to take the integral from s to b. You're going to take the integral from s to b, and then you're going to take the limit as s goes to negative infinity. Take the integral from s to b, and take the limit as s goes to negative infinity, and that would be the definition of the improper integral negative infinity to b of f of x dx. Okay? Is everybody clear with that definition? Of course, here, what am I assuming in that definition too? I am assuming that integral from s to b of f of x is defined for any value of s less than b. Okay? And then that would be the definition of that, that integral. Okay? Very, very similar to the first one. Uh, it's just that infinity is in the lower limit. The third kind would be, what if I look, look at the integral from negative infinity to positive infinity? How would I define that? Now that I have defined a to infinity, I have defined from negative infinity to b, I can easily define inf negative infinity to positive infinity by saying that 
The integral from negative infinity to positive infinity is the same as the integral from negative infinity to some number c plus the integral from c to positive infinity. Where, where c could be picked to be any number. Okay? For any c, I can do that. Now, do I have a definition for the integral for, uh, for the integral from negative infinity to c? I have a definition for that. Do I have a definition for the integral from c to infinity? I have a definition. So I'm just using those two to define the third one. Is, is that okay? You guys are okay with that? Once again, convergent will mean the limit is defined. Divergent will mean that the limit is not defined. Okay? Uh, so let's, uh, uh, let's uh, look at an example. Um, let's say um, sorry, well, right here. Let's uh, let's do do one example here. Um, uh, let me change something here for a second. And let's say I'm going from negative infinity to 1, and I'm going to take the root of that, okay? First of all, is my integrand def defined over the interval from negative infinity to 1? Is it defined? Well, let's check. Uh, uh, for the integrand to be defined, what what is required? It is required that 3 minus 2x is larger than 0, right? Or that means 3 is larger than 2x, which means uh, um, which means that uh, 2x is less than 3, which means x is less than 3 half, right? So as long as x is less than 3 half, uh, my integrand is defined. So my integrand is defined over the interval from negative infinity to 1. Okay. How would I, how would I uh, find this integral? Well, I have my uh, definition, right? So what's my definition? My definition is I take the limit uh, as s goes to infinity. By the way, you don't have to use s. You can use t again here or something else, alpha, beta, whatever you want to use. Um, sorry, it should be negative infinity. And then I go from s to 1, 1 over uh, 3 minus 2x, root of that dx. Everybody's okay? Note that when I am doing this integrals from a to infinity or negative infinity to b, my integrand is, is a continuous over the corresponding interval. Okay? Now, uh, this integral, how would, I how would I compute this integral? What should I use? What should I do? Do I know how to integrate if, I, if uh, instead of having 3 minus 2x, if I had just x? Well, that tells you that you need to do a substitution. So let's go ahead and do that. Uh, let's take uh, u to be uh, 3 minus 2x. And then what would be the differential of u? Negative 2 dx which would mean uh, negative half du is uh, dx, right? Okay, so that let's go ahead and uh, look at the substitution. So the limit as s goes to negative infinity. Okay, um, I can write 1 over root of u and what is dx? dx is negative half du. Now, what should I do about the, uh, uh, about the limits of integration? Can you tell me, uh, um, so, the, 
So what is the, uh, what's the limit, lower limit for you? Well, what's, uh, when, uh, what's the lower limit for x? The lower limit for x is what? S, right? So when x is s, what is a u? 3 minus 2s. And when x is 1, when x is 1, what is a u? 1 as well. Are we okay with the change of the uh, limits of integration? All right. Now what? Well, let's uh, do the following. Um, we are going to write this as limit s going to negative infinity. That negative half that I have, let's take it outside. And then I have the integral uh, 3 minus 2s here uh, to 1, 1 over root of u, du. You guys remember we had 1 over root x in the previous problem. What was the antiderivative of 1 over root x? 2 root x, right? So what's the antiderivative of uh, this, this guy? Well, it will be uh, s going to negative infinity negative half 2 root u 1 3 minus 2s which would be I can factor out that 2 and uh, that's gonna cancel out the half and then I'm just gonna have a negative so I have limit s going to uh, negative infinity and I have a negative sign left. I, 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 ca I cancelled out two and a half. And then I'm going to plug in one. If I plug in one I, uh, for u, I get root of one, which would be one. And I have to subtract uh, by plugging in three minus two s. Let's see if you agree that that's what we would be getting. Everybody's okay? You guys are okay with that? Any questions so far? Okay, can someone tell me what the limit is? What's that? Positive infinity, negative infinity, what is that? Okay, first of all, S is going to negative infinity, right? S is going to negative infinity. So what is happening to, happening to 3 minus 2s? Yeah, if, if S is becoming negative and large, S is becoming negative and large, 3 minus 2s will be positive and large. So root of that will be still positive and large. Minus that will be, will be negative and large. But another minus, positive and large, right? So this is infinity. Are we okay with that? You guys are okay with that? And let me then say that the integral, the integral that I had here, it is what? It is a divergent improper integral. Are we okay with that? Okay. You guys are done writing it down? Alright, so let's... Uh, um, we need to know uh, this integral uh, very well, okay? So we're going to use this integral later in uh, chapter 11. So integral from 1 to infinity of 1 over x to the p dx. Here p is a constant. The exponent p is fixed. Uh, what I want to do is I want to know uh, when is this integral convergent and when is this integral divergent. 
for what values of p is this integral convergent for what values of p is this integral divergent that's what I want to know is my question clear to you so the answer let me tell you the answer first the answer is this in, remember 1 over root x and 1 over x squared which one was convergent 1 over x squared right 1 over root x was not so in general when p is bigger than 1 strictly bigger than 1 this integral would be convergent when p is less than or equal to 1 this integral will be divergent are we okay with that and I'm going to show you why that's the case in a second any questions anybody Well, we have this uh, improper integral. We know what the definition is. The is, definition is, it's the limit as t goes to infinity of the integral from 1 to t of 1 over x to the p dx, right? p is fixed. So that's my definition so far. Now, before I move on, you know, at this point, I have the integral of 1 over x to the p dx, right? And at this point, I want to do what? I want to find the antiderivative of 1 over x to the p. How would I find the antiderivative of that? Well, by using the power rule. However, can I apply the power rule when p is 1? Remember, the power rule does not apply when p is 1. Okay? The power rule does not apply when p is 1. So, for the moment, I'm going to assume that p is not 1. For the moment. And if p is not 1, then I can apply the power rule. So, if I apply the power rule, what's the antiderivative? What's the integrand here? The integrand is? The integrand is x to the negative p, right? x to the negative p is the integrand. So, by the power rule, it's 1 over negative p plus 1, x to the negative p plus 1, right? You agree? That's my antiderivative. 1 over negative p plus 1, x to the negative p plus 1. Assuming p is not 1. Okay, so once I have that, notice that 1 over negative p plus 1 is the same as what? 1 over 1 minus p, right? And uh, what is x to the uh, negative uh, uh, p plus 1? If I have x to the negative p plus 1, right? Is that the same as x to the negative p minus 1? Like this? If I use parenthesis. And is that the same as 1 over x to the p minus 1? You agree with that? So that's what I did. Um, so x to the negative p plus 1 is the same as 1 over x to the p minus 1. 1 over negative p plus 1 is the same as 1 over 1 minus p. Alright, so now uh, what I did is uh, maybe I could write one more line here. So here I said, well, let's uh, factor out this is the limit as t goes to infinity. I am factoring out the constant term 1 over 1 minus p and then I have 1 over x to the p minus 1 and I have to evaluate at t and 1 and take the difference. Right? So then I plug in t, I plug in 1 and if I plug in t, plug in 1 I get exactly what? 1 over t to the p minus 1 minus 1, right? Let's see if you agree with my, my work. Everybody's okay. Yeah. Um, Go ahead. With the exponent uh, and x to the negative p plus 1, we got a 1 over x to the p minus 1. Yeah. Should it be 1 minus p? We, I already have 1 minus p here. It's already 1 minus p. So when you put it in the denominator, you have to reverse, right? Yep. 
All right. So every, is everybody okay with uh, the last uh, line that I have here? Now, can you tell me what's the limit of one over t to the p minus one? What's the limit of one over t to the p minus one? Well, that's a little bit tricky, right? It depends on what p is. Remember, so far I only said let's let's say p is not one, right? We assume p is not one. So the limit of one over t to the p minus one depends on what p is. Now, let's say there are two cases. One case when p is larger than one. In that case, can you tell me what's the limit of one over t to the p minus one when p is known to be larger than one, like p is two? The limit would be zero, right, for that term? The limit of one over t to the p minus one, if p is bigger than one, this is a positive, this is a positive exponent. So in the denominator, you have a positive power of t. So as t goes to infinity, the denominator is becoming large, so the limit would be zero. So in that case, that limit is zero, but then what's the limit? You're left with negative one inside, and then you have one over one minus p outside, right? So you get negative one over one minus p, which is, I guess, the same as what? One over p minus one, right? What's the other case? P is strictly less than one. P is less than one, right? That's the other case. What did you say? If P is less than one, what, what can you say about the limit of one over T to the P minus one? Divergent, it's infinity, why? If P is less than one, this p minus one is what, negative? So in the denominator, I have a negative power of t. So in the denominator, if I have a negative power of t like this, negative power of t, that's the same as t to the some positive power, right? And as t goes to infinity, that's gonna blow up, right? So that in that case, the limit is, in that case, the limit is infinity. Right? Is everybody okay? Yeah. Um, okay. The reason I had to assume P is not one is because otherwise I cannot apply the power rule. So at that step, when we applied the power rule here, at that step, the power rule doesn't apply when P is one. Now uh, we are going to discuss when p is one separately. Okay. All right. So is everybody uh, okay with what with, with what I said? So uh, the so is so now what we verified is that the integral from one to infinity of one over x to the p, this integral is convergent when p is bigger than one, divergent when p is less than one. So what happens when p is exactly one? What's going to change? What's going to change? Well, I hate to say this, but we have to say this, I guess. When x, when p is one, the only thing that changes is the integral, uh, the antiderivative. So, what's the antiderivative when p is one? So, I'm, uh, let me use maybe another color to make it separate. So, we use this. So, when p is uh, p is uh, one. The antiderivative of one over x is, in fact, ln of absolute value of x. ln is the log function. If you didn't see log function before in your life, that's fine. Uh, we are going to talk about the log function. Uh, in, in fact, probably next week. Uh, at some at some point next week, pro probably. Uh, but when p is 1, the antiderivative of 1 over x is log x. And what happens is that log x goes to infinity as x goes to infinity. And because of that, when p is 1, this integral will be divergent as well. Am I, am I making sense? And we are going to come back to the case p equals to 1 later when I talk about the log function. 
Is everybody okay with that? Okay, the, the antiderivative of 1 divided by x is the log of absolute value of x. Okay, and this log function goes to infinity as x goes to infinity. And therefore, once again, uh, when p is 1, the integral would be divergent. Is everybody clear on that? If you didn't see log function, don't worry about it. We are going to uh, uh, talk about the log function very soon. All right. Other, other types of uh, improper integrals. Now, we looked at uh, improper integrals where the function, the integrand, is uh, continuous, but we are integrating over an infinite interval, right? Over an inter infinite interval. Now, let's come back to finite interval again. But let's say now I have the following situation. I have a integrand f over a finite interval from a to b. The function is uh, continuous everywhere over that interval, but it has an infinite uh, uh, discontinuity at b. So at the point b, the function has a discontinuity, otherwise the function is continuous from a to b. Am I making sense? In that case, what would be the integral from a to b of f of x dx? Well, you, you can see why I need that integral, right? I need that integral to understand whether the area below the graph of f, above the interval from a to b, is that area finite or not? In order to understand that, I need that definition. And what would be that integral? Well, again, it's very similar. I take the integral from a to t, of f of x dx for any t less than b because for any t less than b the integral will exist and then I take t I take the limit as t goes to where? I take the limit as t goes to b but notice that t goes to b from what side? left side okay is that clear? so I have an interval from a to b the function has a discontinuity at the right end point. What would I do? Well, I'll take the integral from a to t, and then I'll take the limit as t goes to b from the left side of b. Okay, that's the definition of uh, of this. Uh, uh, in, this is this is called a type two. All the integrals that I have done so far, improper integrals, they are all type one. Okay, these are all. Let me write that down. Uh, this is a type 1 this this is a type 1 integral uh, all these are type 1 type 1 type 1 type 1 basically refers to infinite infinite interval now we are looking at type 2 right here so this is a this is a type 2 this is a type 2 improper integral. Okay, I have uh, this continuity at the right end point of the finite interval. Now, what if, what if I have a, I have a situation where the integrand is discontinuous at the left end point, but otherwise it's continuous over the interval from A to B. In that case, what's the integral from A to B? Well, in that case, I take the integral of f from s to b, and then I take the limit as s goes to a. The limit as s goes to a from the right side of a. Okay, this is what I do when I have a discontinuity at the left end point of the finite interval. Everybody's okay? All right. And again, what is what is this quantity giving me? Integral from a to b. The integral from a to b is giving me the area below the graph of f, above the interval from a to b. Okay, it could be finite, it could be infinite. Right? Let me give you examples of this type of, this is also a type 2. This is also a type 2 improper integral. Let me give you examples of type 2 improper integrals. One of them, integral from 0 to 1, 1 over root x, 
Integral from 0 to 2, 1 over x minus 2 squared. 1 over root x has a discontinuity where? At the left hand point, 0. From 0 to 1, the graph of root x, 1 over root x looks like this. From 0 to 1, the graph of 1 over root x looks like this. And at 0, I have an infinite asymptote, right? And um, for the second integral from 0 to 2, if I look at the graph of 1 over x minus 2 whole squared, between 0 and 2, the graph looks like what I have there. At, at 2, I have a asymptote. Okay? So my, in the second in integral, the integrand is, uh, is discontinuous at 2. But otherwise, it's continuous from 0 to 2. Everybody's okay? First one is discontinuous at the left end point. The second one is discontinuous at the right end point. Another situation that can happen. I have the interval from A to B. The function is continuous everywhere between A and B, except there is one point C inside the interval where uh, the function has an infinite discontinuity. So, I have the integral from, I have the interval from A to B, there is a C, at C I have a discontinuity, otherwise continuous. So what's the integral from A to B then? The integral from A to B is defined by the integral from A to C plus the integral from C to B. Do I have a definition for the, for the integral from A to C? Yes. Do I have a definition for the integral from C to B? Yes. Right? So this is also type 2. This is also called type 2. What's the difference between type 2 and type 1? Type 1 means infinite interval. Type 2 means finite interval, but I have a discontinuity somewhere. Right? Uh, let me show you one example as quickly as I can. Integral from negative 1 to 2 of 1 over x to the 4 dx. Integral from negative 1 to 2 of 1 over x to the 4 dx. What's the graph of 1 over x to the 4? The graph of 1 over x to the 4 looks like what I have. Uh, at 0, I have an asymptote, right? Um, the, the, the function goes to infinity on the left side of 0. Uh, on the right, si right side of 0, the function also goes to infinity, right? So that's the graph, and, and I'm trying to integrate from negative 1 to 2. So I am basically trying to say, see wh whether the area below the graph of this function, above the interval from negative 1 to 2, is finite or not. And I can determine that by... So what, by definition, what is that? By definition, this integral is the same as... Well, remember... I have a discontinuity at a point in the middle, then I have to break it up as negative 1 up to the discontinuity at 0. And then I go from the point of discontinuity to the right end point, and I have this. Right? And uh, next, do I have a definition for each one? What's this first one? The first one would be the limit as uh, t goes to 0 from the right, negative 1 to t, 1 over x to the 4 dx. And the other one would be the limit as s goes to uh, 2 from the left side, integral from Oh, sorry, what am I saying? This would be what? Zero, right? Zero. Uh, from the right... Oh, I, I think I misplaced... Uh, did you guys see that I misplaced the uh, plus here? This should be a negative, right? From the left and at zero, from the right, and this is going to go from... Uh, where am I at? Okay, so S2, 2. 2. 1 over x to the 4 dx. Okay, I'm not going to go over this, but we're going to finish this tomorrow, okay?